So what we're, we're going to learn is that the towers didn't burn up, nor did they slam to the ground, but turned into dust in midair. That's not a collapse, that's dust squirting up. Why did so few people see that? Because they were told to see a collapse, maybe? There's three main things that keep people from seeing what's going on. Problem solving skills, group think, you know, peer pressure, and that they're terrified by the implications. We're going to just focus on the problem solving aspect. If I tell you, the answer is 27, am I right? Well, um, what's, what's the question? What's the problem I'm solving? If you don't know the problem, how do you, how do you know if the answer is right or wrong? You first have to define a problem before you can solve it. And it can be referred to as a syntax error, because the order matters. Like when doing this math, are you adding those numbers together first or multiplying these first? you'll end up with a different answer depending on how you group them. The same thing with crime solving or with problem solving. The order matters. So if you start out with a theory, you know, we have thermite or we have bombs or we have airplanes or whatever theory someone has, and they, they take their pick from this list of things, and then they go cherry picking and searching for the data that's going to support their theory. So in essence, in essence, what they've done is determine the problem. But what happens if it was something else that they didn't take into consideration? They'll never get to the right answer. And that actually is one of the key things in a cover-up. You get people arguing about guesses, about uh, assumptions about what the problem is, and they never look at the problem. If you don't. Look at the problem, you can't solve it. So what they're using is a theory to determine what happened. That's, that's the wrong direction. We have to start out with what happened. You collect data, and the data always tells you what happened. And from that, you determine how it happened. But only after you, you first establish what happened can you determine how it happened. If you don't know what it is, you can't determine how it happened. For example, look at these beams falling with dust trailing behind them, opaque dust. Let's say you're going to um, impersonate one of those beams. So you cover yourself with dust and jump off the top of the building. From the ground up, would someone see that dust trailing off of you? No. You need more dust. Okay, let's say you get a couple of armloads of flour and eject it out as you're falling. Can you impersonate this? No, no that's opaque dust. It, it originally, it initially blocked out all of the sunlight. 100% of the sunlight, so it was pitch black. It's very dense dust. And you come to the realization that these pieces of material are becoming dust. They're frothing up into dust as they fall. And they didn't hit the ground. But if you didn't know that uh, these turned to dust, and you start out with an assumption, you wouldn't get to the right answer because do you know of anything that could turn a building to dust in midair? Something turned it to dust in midair. So it's important to first determine what happened, then how it happened, and only then who did it or why they did it. But again, we're just going to focus on what happened. The towers didn't slam to the ground. If they had slammed to the ground, there would be over a million tons of debris left stacked up in the ground. That didn't happen. Manhattan would have been flooded. 
Well, as we'll see, the towers were built in the Hudson River with a dike around them. If you slam a million tons of debris down onto the dike, you're going to break it. Didn't happen. And if you slammed a million tons of debris to the ground, it's going to make a thud. The seismic signals did not reflect that. Those are the three biggest issues, but there's a whole lot of others as well. But we'll focus on those initially. The lack of debris, the fact the bathtub wasn't damaged, and the low seismic recordings. There's all sorts of other things, and toasted cars, of course, is one of the favorite things. And then in the second part, I talk about other um, pieces of information, other data that shows more about what technology is involved. But remember, we first have to establish what happened.